Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick. And in this exciting video, we are gonna practice safe coding because safe coding is great coding. And what that means is that if we have optionals in our code, we're gonna safely unwrap them so that we can always be sure and check whether or not we have values or whether or not that optional variable is actually nil. So the two main ways we're gonna do this in this video are using if let statements and guard let statements. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of examples on how these could be used, how they are important. And as you start becoming a better Swift developer, you're gonna find that every time you have an optional and you need to use it, it is smart and important to unwrap these optionals the correct way. Because if you're following other tutorials out there where you are explicitly unwrapping, so you're using the exclamation point, you're probably gonna end up running into a lot of crashes and a lot of errors in your code. So instead of using that exclamation point, which I recommend never using, uh, you can unwrap them safely by using if let and guard let statements. And I think this is one of the most important videos in the entire course. And that's because in every single app, you're gonna run into situations where you have optional values. And it's always smart to unwrap those variables in a safe way. And this applies not only to Swift UI apps, but also to UI Kit apps and pretty much any time ever that you're writing Swift code. So very important, let's take a look. So I'm back again in Xcode, of course, and let's create a new file for this video. Right click the navigator, new file, Swift UI view, and let's call this if let guard bootcamp. You can call it whatever you want. We're talking about if let and guard statements. So I'm just calling it if let guard bootcamp. Go ahead and click resume on the canvas. And let's get coding. Let's start out by creating our template view here. So let's add a navigation view. Open the brackets. In the navigation view, let's add a V stack. Open the brackets again. The bottom of the V stack, we'll add a spacer. And on the top, we will add some text. And for the text, let's say here, we are practicing safe coding. Let's add a title to this. So underneath the V stack, navigation title, let's call this safe coding. And underneath this text, I'm gonna add one more text. We'll do text. And this one, let's make it dynamic. So I'll add a variable at the top here. We'll do at state var uh, display text of type string equals, and we'll set it equal to a blank string for now. And we'll take this display text and we'll put it into this text component. Let's give it a font of title just so we can see it a little bigger. Click resume on the canvas. And when this VStack appears, I want to change this text, what we did in the last video. So we're going to call dot on appear, and then I'm going to open the brackets. And we're going to put some extra logic into this function. So I'm going to create a separate function that we're going to call. So underneath the body down here, I will add func. Uh, we'll call it load data. Open and close parentheses, open the brackets. And we're going to call load data on appear. So load data we'll put in here. And we're gonna start off very simply by changing the display text uh, when we call it load data. So we'll add a delay first. We'll call dispatch dispatchq.main.async after. Dispatch time is dot now plus, let's do three seconds. And then execute, what code do we want to run after three seconds? We're gonna say display text equals, uh, this is the new data. So obviously if this was a real app, you would have a call here. Instead of this line, you would have a call to your database to go download some information. And then you wouldn't just be displaying a text, you display that actual data, that actual information that you downloaded. But for this tutorial's sake, we're just gonna change the text to say, this is the new data. So very simple, nothing new so far. Let's click resume on the canvas and let's just see this in action real quick. So I'm going to click play and we don't have any text here. And then after three seconds, the data should load and says this is the new data. So the first thing we're gonna look at here is this text component. 
because what if we didn't want to actually draw this whole text field onto the screen until we had the data? So right now, when it's a blank string, and if I click, if I stop running the preview, right now, before this new data loads, this text component is actually being drawn onto the screen. It's just that it has a blank string, so we can't actually see any text. But what if this string was something that we didn't want to start blank? We wanted to start it as nil. So what if this was actually optional? So I'm, I'll delete that and I'll put a question mark. And what if it was set equal to nil at the start? So there was no text here. Well, now we get an error because we can't just use this display text because it's basically saying that this is optional. There's a chance there is no text here. So if there is nothing here and this is nil, we can't just put this on the screen. So what can we do? Well, we can use an if let statement. So we'll say if let text equals display text. Open the brackets. And then we're going to put this text and font inside this brackets. And instead of referencing display text, we're going to reference this text. So I'll put that in here. So what this is saying is if display text is not equal nil, if there is a real value in display text, create a new variable called text with that actual value. So every time we reference this actual text, we know it's got value. So this line creates this new variable text. And if it is true, if there is an actual value, it'll run this code. But if there is no value in display text, we cannot create this object. This will never execute and it will skip over this. So now we can run the exact same thing, except we're starting our display text as an optional string. So I'll click resume on the canvas. And again, after three seconds, this text will go from nil to an actual value. So then this will be true and this will execute. So now we can see this is the new data. So now I want to take this a couple steps further to give you a little bit more real world example of how powerful some of this stuff is. So let's start by adding a loading indicator to the screen. So at the top, we'll do at state var is loading of type bool and we'll set it equal to false to start. And when we call load data, let's put is loading as true. So we'll, at the top here, we'll do is loading equals true. And when we actually load that data after we finish loading it, let's change is loading back to false. So we call load, we call load data, it starts loading. And after we load it, we change it back to false. And below this if let statement, let's just add if is loading. So if this is true, open the print, open the brackets, and we'll add a progress view. Open close parentheses on that. Let's check this one more time. So as soon as this screen comes, is loading is true. So it's loading. And then as soon as it loads, that progress indicator goes away. This is looking better. And now let's simulate like we're actually loading some data for a user in our app. So we'll create one more variable up here. We'll do at state var. Uh, let's call it current user ID of type optional string. And we'll set this equal to nil again. So now sometimes in your app, you have situations when people are using your app and they're signed in and they'll have a user ID. But you also have situations where people are using your app and they are not signed in. They never made an account and they don't have a user ID. So in this example, we're going to pretend like we only want to load data if they actually have a user ID. So when we call this load data function, we don't want to immediately just start downloading our data. We first want to check, is there a current user ID? So let's use an if let statement for this. So we're going to do if let user ID equals current user ID, open the brackets. So if there is a current user ID, let's create a new variable called user ID, and then we will run this code. And we'll run this code here, which I'll cut and paste it. So now we are only going to run this if there is an actual user ID. And we're getting this little warning here because we're not actually using this user ID. So let's just use it. Let's put it into this text string here for now. So we'll do, so let's just add user ID is colon forward slash open and close parentheses. And we'll put in the user ID. So right now, if I click resume on the canvas, 
I'll zoom out a little bit here. I don't want to zoom out too far in case this is hard to read. But right now, we can press play on the live preview, and we know that current user ID is equal to nil. So we're going to call load data, and it's going to say if let user ID equals current user ID. So if there is a current user ID, create this variable and then execute this. But we know current user ID is equal to nil. So this is false, and this is never going to execute. And that's why we never see the loading indicator, and we never download the data, and it never gets updated on our view. So what I'm going to do here, just for this, just for this sake, at the end of this if let, I will do else, open the brackets. So if this is not true and there is no user ID, let's just change the display text equal to uh, error. There is no user ID. So if we run it one more time, you'll see that immediately this is false. So it goes straight to this is the error. There is no user ID. And if we go to the top and we change it so there is an actual user ID. So let's do test user one, two, three. And if we resume this again, now we can see the same function is getting called, but it's checking that there is a user ID and then it is loading our new data. And we can see the user ID is test user one, two, three. So this is the power of the if let statement because we can always just check that we do have a value before running a certain piece of code. So up here, we're checking if we have a value before putting some text on the screen. And down here, we're, we're checking if we have a value before we are actually calling some code to download from our database. Now, before we go, I also want to introduce you guys to guard statements, which are very similar to if let statements. And we're going to actually create basically the same function again, but we're going to do it. But this time we're going to do it using a guard statement. So underneath this load data, let's create another func. Let's do func load data to open and close parentheses, open the brackets. So we're going to do basically the same thing. And the first thing we want to do is check if there is a user ID. So this time we'll put guard let user ID equals current user ID else open the brackets. And in this else, we can put the code for if there is no user ID. So up here we had this bracket and then the else was down here, but now the else is at the top and we're just going to put this line of code into the else. So the, so we have the else and then we're getting a quick error because they guard the body must not fall through. There must be a return. So all we need to do is after this display text, we will call return. So what's happening here, we are saying guard, let user ID create a new variable called user ID and it will be the value that is in current user ID. So if current user ID is equal to nil, we won't be able to create this new variable and then this will run. But if there is a value here, then we're going to create this new user ID. So if it's successful, the rest of the function down here will run. But if this is not successful, this will run. And then we're going to return, which basically means get out of this function. So once you hit this return, nothing below this will execute. So first we check if we have this user ID. And then if we do have this user ID, we want to actually load the data. So I'm going to copy these lines of code here from the is loading through the dispatch queue. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it down here below the guard statement. So again, first we're checking if we have this user ID. If it if it's false, if the user ID is nil, it's just going to run this. But if it's true, it's going to run the rest of the function. And this function is the same thing that we have up here. These two functions are exactly the same, except this one uses if let, this one uses guard let. And as a developer, you can start to figure out which one you want to use in which case. They both do the same thing. I personally try to use guard statements more just because this looks a little cleaner to read, but let's test this out quick. So on a peer, I'm going to call load data two instead. And let's start by setting the current user ID equal to nil. Click resume on the canvas. And when the current user ID is nil, 
this guard statement is failing, so we can't create this new user ID. And of course, the display text says error, there is no user ID, and that's why we see it. If we change the current user ID back to test user 123, and we run it again, we click resume, this guard let will succeed. We'll create a new variable called user ID that we can use in our function, and then the rest of this function will run. And then we can see this is the new data with our new user ID. And the, the last thing I want to mention here is let's instead of using this if let statement, let's just add this text with the display text directly. So we'll do text, open parentheses, and we'll add the display text. Let's copy the font modifier onto this. And we're going to get that error again because this display text is optional. Now, if you've taken other online coding courses, you've probably seen people force unwrap optionals. And that means adding that exclamation point. So if you ever see someone using this exclamation point, most likely it's bad coding and there's a better way to do it. Because by using if let statements, you can always check if there's a value rather than force unwrapping. Because yes, the error goes away when we force unwrap with the exclamation point. But if there is no value in this display text, we're going to get a crash. Because right now, if this is nil, and I try to resume, it's not even going to let me resume because this won't compile. Because this is causing a crash because we don't actually have a value in here. See, I'm getting a crash here. The bottom line here is, and I'll put a comment, do not use exclamation point ever. Another way of saying that is do not force unwrap values. In a production in production code that you're actually going to put in the app store, I would pretty much never have this exclamation point. And if you're seeing these exclamation points, then there's probably a smarter, safer way to manage your data. And the ch and chances are the solution is going to be using if let or guard let statements. But do not force unwrap values. So I'm just going to comment this out. Do not force unwrap unless you absolutely have to, but you pretty much never have to. So if let or guard statements is safe coding and safe coding is great coding. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or you're confused about anything, definitely leave it in the comments below and I will try to clear up whatever I didn't clear up in this video. Bottom line, if you take anything away from this video is do not force unwrap values and safely unwrap by using if let and guard statements. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.